This is single status. Single status fam, we have my friend Marquise Johnson here with us today. And I was speechless the whole time with this episode because this man opens up about his testimony, about his addictions, being freed from from drug addiction, porn addiction, from alcoholism, from all these things. And he is really just thriving in life now. And he's such a good example uh, for so many uh, young men out there and also for for women in what we're looking for in a man of God. He he gives so much advice on on dating and his approach and and um and and waiting for God. So guys, listen to this whole episode. It's a long one, but it, it you do not want to miss it. So um and also I just want to remind you to make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram if you don't already. My links are below and share the podcast with a friend, rate, review, subscribe, do all the things, guys. I appreciate your support so much. All right, enjoy the episode. All right, guys, welcome back to Single Status Podcast. Guess what? We have my friend Marquise here, Marquise Johnson. Say yes, hello we to the here, we single here. fam. It feels so good to be a part of this. I've been um, tracking Samantha's growth and just the podcast. So when she hit me up and asked that I want to be a part of it, I'm like, this is definitely a privilege and opportunity. So it was good to be on here for sure. Yes, thank you so much for being here. And I was just telling Marquise before this that I was praying about who to have next, and I felt like God led me to have him on, and we kind of met through mutual friends at church, and so I'm just so happy he's here and to hear his story, and let's just jump into it. Let's dive into it. I'm ready. Yeah, so just, I guess, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, cool. In my head, I was We'll start thinking, light. <laughs> yeah, in my head, I was thinking like, and all right, we'll cool. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So, um, obviously, I'm, I'm Marquise. Uh, I'm 30. I'm a barber. Um, I'm, I'm really heavy into youth ministry or well, young adults ministry. So I um, got a lot of time invested into young adults, um, things that I enjoy. I love the gym. I love working out. I've been seeing your IG videos working out. Yeah, so locked in. So I, I love working out. Um, I really love challenging people. That's just really who I am because I feel like the most growth that has happened in my life is when I've been challenged. Mm. So for me, I love to be that person and people like to challenge them, not to a point that they what they can't do, but what they can do. And so mm. that's just really who I am. I'm really looking to get the, the most out of everybody that I'm connected yeah. to. So That's good. And that's important because... There are a lot of people that are well-intentioned, and, but we kind of sugarcoat things for people. And yeah. sometimes we just need people to say, no, like you're capable of more. Like, yeah. do you see who you are? Absolutely. You know how much you can do. And so it's important to have people around us that can challenge yeah. us and friends that can really call out our gifts and our abilities and everything. So that's important. Yeah, like I actually just recently heard it was, it was, I don't know what I was listening to, but they were talking about accountability and they put it in a way that I've never heard before. They said accountability is giving a, giving a account of the ability that you have. Hmm. And I'm like, sometimes when I think of accountability, it's like, you're going to stretch me in a capacity that I can't do. But like accountability is holding you to uh, account of the ability that you already have. Yeah, you are capable. And I yeah. was just like, wow, like accountability is so key, right? It's, it's what you can do. But I think when we hear it sometimes, it's like it's being held to a standard that we feel like we can't do. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good. So, yeah. So tell us, tell us, like, I guess let's go back yeah. and... Um, I want to hear your story, like how you got to who you are today. And yeah. um, it seems just like you have so much going for you and you're really active in your community. And yeah. um, you seem to be a really good example for other uh, like young men. And 
So I want to kind of go back and hear your story. Yeah, so <clears throat> I would say I was the traditional Christian, right? Um, and when I say traditional Christian, I would say I grew up in a household that, okay. you know, obviously we, we we knew about God. We were taught about God, but my lifestyle didn't reflect God, that, that I mm. didn't know him at all. And so I think, you know, just growing up, you hear the don'ts and the do's and obviously you you kind of stay away from the don'ts that you feel like is harmful, but um, like the things that you probably shouldn't do, but that will feel good, you're probably going to slowly gravitate towards yeah. that. And so <clears throat> I just remember just really growing up and I, I would feel like I was just, I didn't know who I was. And I think like with me growing up, not really being solid in my identity, you know, one minute somebody could say this about you and then the next minute you, you know, you drop the ball and now they see you as something totally different. Yeah. And so it's like, <clears throat> how do you stay stable in who you think that you are when you're hearing different things about yourself? So I think like just as I grew up, um, just being introduced to um, <laughs> so many different things as a kid that you shouldn't be introduced to, like yeah. um, having encounters with um, cousins or, or friends that... Um, introduced me to like pornography or just different mm -hmm. things like that where in our house we didn't grow up you know with those things in there and so slowly tainting you know my perspective on what purity is and you know what it looks like and um just as I just constantly growing up you know just falling victim to the culture that I grew up in womenizing um looking to get the the, the fast money the falling into drugs, falling into drinking. And I was just super lost. Like, mm. but I was going with the flow. I did the the typical things. I made sure I still went to church, right? I made sure I still prayed. I made sure that I still gave. But, you know, that's what I thought, you know, having a relationship with God was. And it's so many things, obviously, that we wouldn't even have the time to, co to cover. But, you know, just I felt like I had really experienced everything, addicted to drugs, addicted mm. to drinking, um, addicted to pornography, addicted to sex, addicted to not seeing myself correctly. So it was like I really got a taste to, to see the worst of the worst. And it's so crazy. Mm. I'm working at this job one day and this guy, he's an atheist, right? And he comes up to me, I'm probably like on a job, which is, this is just so horrible and trash. <laughs> I think I probably was drinking a little bit, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody in that culture or that job, <clears throat> they used to drink. And so- What job was it? You're, were you a barber then? Or? No, I wasn't a barber. I wasn't a barber then. Yeah. I was not in purpose for sure. Okay. So it was like this, um, what was it? It We made the batteries for all the electric cars. So I was a mix operator. Okay. And so this guy, he comes up to me, atheist, and he said, hey, man, what you got going on this Sunday? And I said, oh, man, I got church. And he looked at me and he said, you go to church? Hmm. And I said, yeah, I go to church. And he said, oh, I would have never knew that. And so he was like, all right, well, cool. I'll talk to you later. And so he just walked away. And it was a sobering moment right there. And I literally heard God says this. He said, you claim me? but you don't look anything like me. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So at that moment, <clears throat> I think wow. that was the time I came into the realization that I was a sinner. Because mm -hmm. I think we grow up, and long as we say we profess Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we pray to him at night, we say our grace, we should be good, right? Mm. We're in relationship with him. <clears throat> long as we do just the practices we may see. And when he said that, that was when everything in my life changed because I literally came to the knowledge that I'm not a son of God mm. because you can only look like who's your father. Wow. And he said, you're claiming me, but you don't look anything like me. And it was the aha moment for me where now I came to the true realization, dude, I am a sinner. And if 
God come back today, I will not be with him Mm -hmm. because I don't look anything like him. And from there, I remember that Sunday, it's been thousands of times, like, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people can relate to this, times at church, your heart is beating, you're feeling like the Lord is calling you to the altar, you go up there, and then obviously you just repeat the same thing. But this Sunday, this was probably the Sunday that I became very transparent with the Lord. And I said, okay, I'm not 1000% sure how real you are. I do believe you exist. I do believe that you're real. I do have some faith. But I'm like, if you show me how real you are, like, I'll literally follow you for all the days of my life. Like, Mm. literally. Like, if you deal with these areas, you know, that I've never said, right? Because you feel like you're not supposed to say it, even though he already know your heart, Mm -hmm. right? But it was the moment of literally admitting. And so I remember I go to church that Sunday, heart beating, doom, 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 doom. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking like, man, I know I need to go up there. And I literally felt that if I didn't go and and I'm literally not exaggerating, I I really felt like I was going to die. That's how hard my heart was beating. And so Mm -hmm. I responded and, you know, I went up there. And this is before I really had a knowledge of, you know, the Hebrew language of, you know, God name being Yahweh. And I, and I just literally heard something say Yahweh. Wow. And I began to just say Yahweh, and it went from me saying it once to me screaming. And so I believe when I'm looking back, I began to get delivered from all of like the demons and the things that um, literally had me in bondage that literally... As you call upon the name of the Lord, he will save you. And literally, I was calling on the name of the Lord. And in that moment, I was being delivered. Wow. And literally, so from that point when that happened, uh, I remember I was still addicted to um, like smoking tobacco and stuff. And everybody, they literally... Um, would, would say, man, dude, you're going to die with, you know, it's called a, a black and mild for it. If people don't really know what it is, it's like tobacco. Okay. And dudes would literally say, dude, you're going to die with, you know, a black and mild in your hand. And wow. I agree because I felt like it wasn't a day that could go by that I could not not smoke one. Mm-hmm. So I remember I go home after this encounter with God, right? And I'm like, okay, Lord. This is going to be my first time fasting, honestly. And I said, um, I only want to fast because I want to love you. I wasn't fasting to get set free from anything. Mm. I just really wanted to love him. I knew Mm -hmm. I didn't love him, but I wanted to. And so I said, I want to go on this fast because I want to love you. And um, literally, I was like, okay, so I think I did just fruits and vegetables for seven days and I had literally just moved from my old apartment with some friends and I had just got my own apartment. And as this transition was was taking place, I did not notice within those seven days, I had never smoked the black and mild. Wow. It, it just never dawned on me, right? Mm. That I hadn't, but everyone know that you can't see Marquise going a day without smoking a black. Mm. And so literally and this this was when i knew that god was real so i'm in my place the the 7 day fast is over i'm like man that was good i'm like but now i'm about to smoke my black and mild right i'll never forget the meal that i had so i said i'm going to go to home depot get the um red hot sausages <laughs> with the <laughs> vernis and uh the barbecue chips and i had went and picked up a black and mild and so i eat the food and then i get ready to smoke and I remember I didn't have an ashtray at the time. I just had a water bottle. And so I said, I'll just ash in a water bottle then. Not that I was drinking out of that water mm-hmm. bottle. but <laughs> So I, 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 I sparked the black and mild and I hit it once. And then I hear this very calm voice says this. If you want to be free, put it in the water. But if you want to be addicted for the rest of your life, hit it again. And so I'm like... <laughs> I wouldn't, you know, like in my head, Wow. I wouldn't pose this question to myself. I don't have the power to tell myself 
you can free yourself. Because I had already tried, right? Yeah. I had just gave up on trying because I'm like, it's not working. And I literally dropped it in the water. And every since that day, I've never in my life been able to smoke or even desire a black and mild. And that was the beginning of God showing me what true relationship and how real he was to me. And after that, it was it was history. I'm speechless. Yeah, it's crazy. This is, that's God. That's how God works. And he's so good. And it's, it's like he's waiting for that moment of surrender. And then he takes over from there. Because I think a lot of times we think, oh, I have to do all these things. I have to change all these things. But when we surrender, and yeah. that's what you did, then he starts gently sh- uh, giving us the grace to let go of, of of certain things and to have the power, his power, to be set free from these things. Absolutely. And that is, I, I'm like speechless by your testimony. And thank you so much for being vulnerable enough to share with us. Oh yeah, no problem, for sure. And so I guess what happened from there? So so the Lord started working through your heart, through your surrender. Yeah. And then practically, how did you start being set free in the other areas of your life? Is because you yeah. mentioned like other addictions that you had and stuff like that. Um, and the smoking, it did that, that is just amazing how God now made it almost easy for you to say like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Like I can't even be around this anymore. So yeah. What were the other practical ways that, you know, you started to transform? Yeah, I think, right. So when you're so used to like, when you don't know what it means to be a child of God, yeah. You're used to working for everything. Mm -hmm. Everything is based off of how well you can perform. And I think like, because in this world, right, you can't get a job unless you prove or do some type of work on why you deserve it. And Mm -hmm. so it's how we're coded. Yeah. By by the world standard, right? right? Everything that you ever would attain is literally about what you do. If you want to be healthier... It's about what you do, right? So I think I had, once I began to understand that it was literally nothing I physically could actually do to be set free, I started to understand that God was calling me to steward. And I'm like, what do you want me to steward? Different friendships, Mm -hmm. right? I I had began to disconnect myself from my friends, and I needed to get connected to those that were growing spiritually. So boom, that's one of the first things. Second thing, right? So when you when you are, so if you're dealing with pornography, or if you're dealing with, you know, if you've, you know, had sex with, you know, the opposite sex, or whatever that it may be, you're going to be wrestling with the spirit of lust. And Mm -hmm. I remember I was listening to this sermon, and I literally just applied this to every part of my life. He literally said, in Genesis, the devil was a snake. But then when you get to Revelations, he's a dragon. And he said, no one talks about he had to be getting fed because he grew from a snake to a dragon. But we don't see who's feeding him to where he gets to this place. Mm. And then the sermon, he said, I wonder what are the things that you keep falling to because you don't know that you're feeding it. Mm. And I was yeah. like, goodness gracious. So when I was falling to pornography consistently, it wasn't because I desired to fall to it, but I would watch movies. And obviously it's so much lust in these movies. It's so much lust in these shows. It's so yeah. much lust in the music. And I didn't see anything wrong with it. But what I didn't know that literally I was just feeding the spirit of lust. Mm -hmm. And so when I would fall, it was a dragon. Yeah, I couldn't war against the dragon because I was feeding it. So the practical thing I had to I had to start to learn, what am I feeding? Am I feeding the spirit, the spirit of God or am I um, feeding spirits from from the enemy that's 
constantly making me live in this habitual cycle. And yeah. so I think the practical things is you have to, and the Holy Spirit will, will literally begin to share with you, what are you feeding? And so I just think the practical thing was prayer, worship, because I really didn't enjoy reading a lot at that time. Mm-hmm. So as much as I want to say, I was reading the Bible a whole lot. I was more drawn to the Lord through prayer and worship and then the scripture. But as I just spent time in that, it was just like he started to give me wisdom to understand like the practical things. What are yeah. you feeding, Marquise? What are you entertaining? Um, how how do you flee from lust, right? Don't yeah. pray. Like it's a scripture that it doesn't even tell you to pray first. It says flee, run, mm. right? So it's like when you're struggling with lust, don't pray. Run first. Mm-hmm. Get away from whatever that thing is and then pray. Yeah. Because you trying to stay in it and pray. Like, obviously, when the scripture just tell us to flee from it, it must mean that lust is so strong that you need to first run from it. Yeah. And then pray. Yeah. So those are some of the practical things that I feel like the Lord blessed me with as he began to transform my life. Yeah. That, that's so good. And thank you for sharing that. And it has been on my heart lately because it, and it's nothing to be ashamed of because our generation is so exposed. You know, I, I read something, um, about like kids start watching porn now on average at like age 10 or 11, um, because it's so easy to access yeah. in our phones. And it, it's literally like we have, um, like a slap machine in our phones that we can get addicted to, and it's male and female. True. Um, and it's it's interesting because I thought, you know, when I was early in my walk with the Lord, I just thought like porn was n- a normal thing, and especially with guys, I was like, oh well, you know, any guy I date, like they're just gonna yeah. always. <laughs> and I thought it was just like this is how it's gonna be, like that's just what it is. And then I remember I dated this guy um, who actually uh, he dealt with like drug addiction before and he went to rehab. And so they really instilled in him like the dangers of porn that Mm. that um, that the world and like the entertainment industry, they don't tell you about how, uh, you know, we don't even know when we're watching porn, how it can lead to all these other things. It's like a gateway drug, like like we we learn in school, like weed is a gateway drug or whatever. Yeah. Um, how porn can end up leading to all these different things and even like child porn. And, and, and I, I think that's something that's so important that we start like, uh, understanding yeah. more. And, um, again, it's, it's no shame because we're so easily exposed to it. Yeah. So, and like the human temptation, you know, like it's there. Um, but it was so interesting because anyway, that guy uh, that I dated, he he would never watch porn. And he, he said that was why, because it was really yeah. instilled in him. And I was shocked. I'm like, what? You don't watch porn? Yeah. Because I was so used to, I thought that was just normal. But then it just opened my eyes to like how God views it. And I just started yeah. seeing a lot of darkness and even how a lot of people are forced into it. And we don't we don't know that a yeah. lot of the people in there are like forced. True. Um, but anyway, I'm just believing that that this generation, we're starting to see the truth and that God's really exposing, um, you know, how deceitful it is and, and, and setting people free from it. So thank you for like oh, sharing that. Look, I do not mind because, you know, my desire is... I'm I'm so grateful that the Lord allowed me to really be bound by all those addictions mm-hmm. and and all of those things like I I'm so grateful um but I'm even more grateful that he he's brought me to a place of holiness. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not like the guy that's trying to be the advocate and I'm still struggling. I'm like actually set free Amen. from those things. And so I like, I know how a person feels after pornography. 
Mm. Why? Because I know how I felt, right? Yeah. I know how it was destroying me. I know how comparison began to build in my mind with women and, you know, just all of these different things. And so for me, I want to be as transparent as possible because I don't want people to see me as this guy that is like, man, this dude has just been living for Jesus his whole life. And he's never like, he don't understand me. I want the narrative to be like, I would have never imagined that this guy struggled or went through these things. Mm. And if my mindset of when I see this guy is something totally new where I couldn't even imagine his past on what it looked like, that can be me too. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's to be able to be transparent so people can have hope, understanding. God yeah. will rewrite your story. Yeah. And then people would not even remember what you look like because the people that I grew up with that knew who I was and just, you know, the lifestyle that I live. To this day, they say, to be honest, I don't even really remember you doing any of those things. Yeah, wow. And it's because God has rewritten the story so yeah. much that the memory of who I was when they knew me, they like, I I can't even remember it. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I'm just grateful to be transparent yeah. to help people. Amen. Yeah, and I just want to say if anyone is struggling with... uh pornography addiction or um, any addiction for that matter like that surrender to the Lord and even just opening up to like trusted people around you you can be set free True. and and it won't be in your own strength it'll be by the Holy inviting the Holy Spirit in and he can help you and he will help you yeah um so let's talk a little bit about so with with that and like Obviously, when you do, um, like we we're talking about the spirit of lust. Yeah. And when we are living in that world of like hookup culture and everything and and even like pornography and everything that it exposes us to, um, we start to view like relationships different. You mentioned yeah. you were viewing women different at that time. And um, so let's talk a little bit about that. Like, how is your view on women changed? Like, what was it before? Yeah. And like how... Um, was your approach with women then or relationships? And then, um, like, how has it changed since yeah. you've been walking with the Lord? Yeah, I think, you know, if you in pornography or in lust, mm -hmm. um, there's usually going to be, like, some heartbreak in there. Right? Oh, yeah. And so... And I've been there. Yeah. yeah. It's... Because you're... you're Especially when, yeah, when you're in, when you're hooking up with people, when you're becoming, you're becoming one yeah. with them. And then when you're breaking that apart, whether it's a one night stand, whether it's a relationship that you were in, um, like a long term relationship, like you're becoming one with that person. And then there's hurt that comes yeah. when that's not a thing anymore. True. Um, so go ahead. Yeah. And so like how you were saying, you know, with that, with that hurt. Is going to distort your view. Mm. That's just naturally how <clears throat> anybody that's hurt and wounded, that's not healed, you will always have a distorted view. And I think, you know, you know how I used to view women, you know, is because you're hurt now and then you're probably buying into what is the culture telling you to do with your hurt? Too, mm, right right like go on to the next one go out to the bar get right. you know someone in bed yeah yeah because it's like all right yeah if it was your first time being hurt but then you had the right people around you helping you navigate that it could be very differently but I think like for me it was more of if you got hurt right well you just need to go smash another chick right right so it's like, that's how you're supposed to deal with the hurt. So however many women that you can get. So the lens that I will be looking through is, man, what's the what's the cold chicks that I can hang up with? Because really what I'm looking for is validation. Mm. Right? That's what we're searching for. And and even with, with porn, with hooking up, with whatever, we're all just looking for connection, really, at the end of the day. Absolutely. And so through that, when you're looking for the validation... And it's usually from the wrong people, right? Now you're using women because that's what pornography mm. actually teaches, right? Yeah. I remember they said, so when it's dealing with pornography, no one watches the same person on porn. 
they're always looking at a different person every time that they watch porn. So now what it creates is that you're always looking for a new person to have sex with or to mm, hook up with. Wow, wow. Because like is is to create this desire that the same person isn't enough. Wow. And it's not enjoyable. And so what it the the distortion is you have to move on to the next one for the rush. Mm-hmm. You have to. So it's the dopamine hit. The dopamine hit, right? And so I think the way so that good. I'm approaching, I was approaching women was like, you want to be known as the guy that has hooked up with the coldest girls. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, and so you're not valuing. I did, well, I'll speak from my perspective. I didn't value um, women heart like that. I'm not thinking about how this could damage them. Why? Because I'm right. already damaged. If yeah. I'm da- a person that's damaged isn't thinking about how they're about to damage someone. So I think that I was reckless with the 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 being mindful of women's heart. And so it was just more how many girls could I hook up with? And I think, you know, the transition now, it, which is so beautiful, is... Because I would manipulate women, but now like the Lord has now put me in this place that now I'm protecting women. Wow. Right? And so like I'll give women advice, right, about things for a guy that's dominated by the spirit of lust because that used to be me. So I know the tricks. I know the language. I know the verbiage. So with every every girl that I, I approach that I talk to um, is, is first through the lens of... First off, this is God's daughter, and he's the king, and I wish I would hurt the king daughter, right? He'll probably put my head on a platter, Wow! right? So I instantly have to lead with that. This yeah. is one of God's daughters, right? And you don't mess with a king daughter. If you right. were in a different country, and if a guy was talking to, you know, the king of that country daughter, he would be so mindful on what he say, how he touch her, like literally everything because yep. he make the wrong move. The king can have him gone. And so now... That's so good. You know, it's <laughs> just... so good. It's a different dynamic. Yeah. So now when, I, when I'm approaching women, it's first off, I already have the mindset. This is one of God's daughters, right? And so let me make sure that even when I say hi, I'm choosing my words in such a way that's honoring to God as her daughter, right? And from there is, how can I help them, right? Is That's always have to be my approach for women. Now, how can I better their life? Because maybe it just may only be a friendship, right? Maybe it could be a relationship, but how do I see myself as being a part in their life of helping them? And so that's another thing of what I'm thinking about when I'm looking, okay, as I'm talking to them, I'm kind of hearing like, oh, they don't see themselves correctly. Okay, cool. Let me speak identity. Let me speak, you know, so I'm always looking now on how I could build women up. And so I would say just my whole perspective of now pursuing women is always through the lens of, First off, this is God's daughter. I have to be very honorable with her heart. Two, um, how can I better her life, right? Mm -hmm. Whether if it's just a friendship or whether if it's more, how can I better her life? And I think those two things allow me to have great friendships with women because I know what not to say that would give off a flirtatious vibe that makes her heart long for more, though I know that that's not what I'm after. Mm. Right. I'm so I'm so mindful on. But it took time because when you come from a place of lust, the verbiage that you're going to use is going to be super flirtatious. You know, you have you're looking for validation still. You're kind of you trying to navigate on, you know, being validated already in the Lord. And so now I would say it's just I'm already validated. I don't need the most beautiful women to tell me that I look good. So mm-hmm. I'm not fishing for a compliment. I'm more of just seeing her as a daughter and trying to figure out just how can I better her life in general. And I would say those are the two different approaches now. Wow, Marquise, yeah. <laughs> you're just bringing the the wisdom today. That that's so so good. 
And I think all the guys need to hear that. Like when we view, when we go into dating with the view of we're trying to, well, when men date women or court women with the view of like, I'm trying to protect her heart that, and I, I've experienced that a few times where, um, in the relationships didn't work out, but when men are, um, when men are clearly trying to protect you, I think that's yeah. a, just a great sign of a, a, a good man of God. Yeah. And um, I think even for women, like when we when we approach dating, like we want to leave the person in a better place, having known us, having been around us than than uh, they were before. I think dating becomes so much better. Like that's how we should date in the kingdom of God. True. Like we're we're um, getting to know each other and and really wanting to leave them in a better spot than what they were. Or where they were before. That I, I agree. And I think it's also one of the greatest witnessing too, right? Because, all right, I'm already leading with the assumption you're one of God's daughter. And you yeah. may not be a believer, but I don't know that yet. Right. But what I've learned is it's, it's been women that uh, that aren't believers at all. And through me just having, you remember, I'm leading with this is already God's daughter mm. and how can I help her? Yeah. They're like, are you a pastor? Like, yeah. <laughs> like no. It's yeah. Like, like, I needed to hear that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even though it, it doesn't go any further, but now what the seed that was planted is Christian man will actually add to your life. Yeah. So it actually gives them more of a desire of, okay, I really don't believe in as Jesus God, but I keep coming across these guys that reflect Jesus. And really my life feels like it's been better every mm-hmm. time I talk to one. Yeah. It literally can draw a person closer to Christ because you're constantly being the image of God, whether yeah. they're a believer or not. And so I think that for a guy or a woman, us flowing in just our identity as children of God, yeah. it could either A, a person that's been struggling with their walk, reunited from one quick talk, rather if it's a person that just doesn't believe in God and they've been trying to figure out what's the direction and they probably ask God if you exist, I, I ask that you send someone and then you know you come you come across and they're talking to you and they're just like, you're different. Because mm-hmm. that's what Something's guys will different. say someone to you, right? right? They'll be like, Samantha, you're different. Like, what is it about you? Because you don't talk like the girls. You don't dress like, what is it about you? And then it's a great witness into. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. And and I, I think also this one guy that um I I met like over a couple years ago. And that's when I first started being around guys. that Because it, it doesn't really matter if you're Christian it's like, are you really following the Lord? Do you have a personal relationship with yeah. the Lord? And you can tell when when they do. And um, this guy that I, I became friends with, uh, I was surprised when he didn't, because we were, you know, we became friends or whatever. And I was surprised he wasn't like asking me out on a date. Yeah. And finally I was like, are you like ever going to ask me out on a date or whatever? Sometimes I, I, I'm, I feel like it's okay sometimes for women to like, you know, kind of yeah. make a, make it clear, like I'm interested or whatever. So I was like, are you ever going to ask me on a date? And he was like, actually, I think you're a really great girl. And um, he's like, but I personally, I'm not ready to be dating anyone right now. Like mm. God is working on me with some things. Like I'm going through some things and I don't want to hurt you. That's good. And I, that... I was not used to guys doing that. I was used to guys just jumping in and throwing all their mess on me and yeah. not weren't caring about it. Yeah. But I actually was like, wow, I respect him so much for saying that. Yeah. And we're still we're still friends. Yeah. And ever since then we've just been friends. But um I I respected that so much. And yeah. it was a sign that wow, this this man really like it knows the Lord and, and is listening to the Holy Spirit and being guided by the Holy Spirit. And and it was protection he was protecting me yeah. from him himself yeah um so anyway so, so yeah good. such a good such a good conversation um so i guess like what are you so you've been single for for a minute right yeah, I, I don't know i don't sure. know your yeah. like history or whatever but 
Um, like, how is single life going? Like, what are you most most thankful for in this season? Or what's yeah. God speaking to you about? <clears throat> I would say, sing, like, s- being single is honestly a blessing. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes people just definitely don't want to hear it. Or you may hear people yeah. say that, you know, singleness is, is a blessing. And it's like, oh, yeah, 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 whatever. But I think for me, me being single has gave God the time to perform surgery on my heart. Wow. It's Mm -hmm. like I've been undergoing surgery in this single stage. And in the beginning, right, you long for a relationship. You desire it. You want it. Right. But I think for me, as I see what wholeness look like, for me, it's like, I know when I come across women that I won't hurt them now. Mm. Because in my singleness, right, it, it gives God time to reveal things that he wants to deal with. Like, I truly believe that, like, God would show you something that he wants to deal with. And he'll say, like, hey, come on in. Let's have surgery, right? You know, we'll perform, you know, it, it may take this long to perform this surgery, but mm-hmm. hey, I want to deal with that. It's kind of like a person that comes to the knowledge that they may have cancer and they have to get it cut out, but they have to undergo four, you know, surgeries and they, they'll have the knowledge and they have two options. Either A, I don't feel like being cut on. I want to do what I want to do right now, which would eventually lead to death. Or I'll go and and get these four surgeries and understand that I have to rest, I have to heal, and then I'll be in a better state so I can live my life. And so Mm -hmm. I think God is first off. He's taught me what it means to be a man of God. Mm -hmm. That is like one of the biggest things for me and and my singleness is, you know, I have the confidence because of God that whoever that I talk to, we're going to be closer to God because he's equipped me. Amen. So it's like this confidence that thank you, Lord, that ultimately you desire that people would know you. So thank you in my single season, you taught me what it means to know you, right? You've equipped me now to be able to lead people to, to know you. You've made me whole. You've healed me. So now I could... Uh, be able to identify people that are hurt and help them go undergo the the surgery or the process that they may have to go through. And so singleness for me has been such of a blessing. I've been able to do more for the kingdom, which is so amazing. I've been able to know what God is calling me to. And I think, in my opinion, if you, as a man, fellas, if you guys don't know where the Lord is calling you, you don't know who to pick. You're winging it. You're hoping through just choosing women that they'll be a good fit. And I think that is what also damaged women because what will happen is you're now going to break up with someone and make them feel like they wasn't enough when they are more than enough. But because you don't know where the Lord is taking you, you don't know how to choose. You don't know how to pick. And so I think like, you know, like it's just been so much in this single season that is just so beautiful that I, Mm -hmm. that I think people really should slow down and, and really first see it as a blessing, whether it's a woman while the Lord is revealing who she is, what are her gifts, what are her talents. So when a guy entertain y'all, that could be amazing and great. And he wants to bring you into his life, but you could say, I don't fit in there. Mm-hmm. Like, this is great, this, but I just actually don't fit in there because I know how God has designed me or yeah. created me. So I think in, in the single season, for me, these are all the beautiful things that God has equipped me with. Um, and so it's just it's just beautiful. That That's so good. That, this conversation, I, I just need to stop for a minute because <laughs> this is so good, guys. You have to, this is so good. Um, but you brought up, you brought up such a good point of we shouldn't, we need to know who we are in Christ and, and know where God is calling us and where God is moving us in order to know what is for us. 
That is so big because if we don't understand that, if we don't take that time with the Lord, yeah. then we're just running, we're just welcoming anyone into our life, friends, romantic pe- yeah. partners, whatever, because we don't even know who we are. So that's so important. And, um, and what you said kind of resonated with where I am right now in my life, where I'm now like so content in the Lord yeah. that I'm like, Lord, I don't want to be out here dating all these random guys. Like, I, and yeah. I'm open, like, trust me, I am yeah. open and I am ready <laughs> for my husband when he comes. But like, I don't want any distractions because I want to be walking in my purpose. I want um, to be filled with joy and love and peace. And, and, um, and these are good like men out here, but if it's not like your person, then we don't want to like waste our time and get into an entanglement. Like Jada, Jada oh I don't know God, where yeah. I got, why I'm using the entanglement I mean, word. They brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> they they kind of brought it up. Yeah. But like, why would we get entangled with someone just because maybe like we're feeling lonely or, or someone's giving us attention? There's a hurt that comes with it when it's not your person. Like yeah. when you have to go to break that off, it's like just a bunch of, stuff that you have to deal with that's distracting you from your purpose and where God has you going. So it's like we need to make sure that we know where we're going with the Lord so then we can pick well. Yeah. And um what are your thoughts on like I guess with like dating apps or and 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 like dating in general like yeah. does that what so, are your thoughts? <clears throat> My thoughts is I think they all can be useful, right? I yeah. mean, I got my own flavor on how I like to move. Okay. Um, but however, people, you know, if um, the dating apps is an avenue that people want to navigate or just dating, I think all of those are great. Mm-hmm. Uh, great ways to connect with people, to meet yeah. people. I think all of those things, you know what I'm saying, are great pathways. And I would say utilize it. Try it, try it out. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that have met the person that, and, and this is what I say. I don't want the good thing. I want the promise. Like, I really don't want the good Amen. thing. Amen. That's good. I want the promise. I don't want the good thing. I want the promise. I want yes. the promise. Like, yes. That's because it's like, and it's, and it's not, oh, I feel like I deserve it. It's no, my father desires for me to have that's the our inheritance, that's sons our inhe- and daughters. Yes. So it's like I want what dad has for me. Amen. That's what I want. So I think it can it can come through any avenue. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I would really have to say, you don't know the promise if you don't know him. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, like amen. if you just don't know him. You don't know what the promise is. You don't know what the promise is. You won't be able to is. see it. You won't be You will able not to see be able it. to see it because we need to be seeing with our spiritual eyes. 100%. And you would, and I would even say you would feel and know that it isn't the promise. Yes. But, which I just want to give this scenario. Um, Esau and Jacob. Okay. Okay. Now, Esau had the birthright. Yeah. And Jacob didn't. And Esau was so hungry, right? And Jacob is in the field. He's working and all of this stuff in. And Jacob comes comes back with this bowl of lentil soup. Esau is hungry. Esau said, man, let me get that soup. Jacob understands the value of the birthright. Let's say the promise. Yeah. Right? Jacob says, I'll give you this bowl of soup if you give me your birthright. Esau, so dramatic, don't have patience, respond and say, what's the point of my birthright if I die from hunger? Mm. So because of that, the now, Hmm. he was willing to trade the promise for the now. Wow. Wow. And so short term the satisfac- short term satisfaction. satisfaction. And I think what happens is even if you're not that close to God and you're growing it and learning him, he has deposited his spirit in you. And so those times where you're entertaining lentil soup, you feel 
and you know that this isn't the promise, but mm-hmm. however, you're hoping that God will bless it to be the promise because you're hungry right now. Because it's comfortable. It's comfortable. It wow. satisfy you right That's such a now. Good, yes. <laughs> like Esau had to live with for yes. the rest of his life that his brother has the promise now. Right. Like, and so it's like, I think that thing right there to just encourage people is the lentil soup tastes good now, Mm -hmm. but longevity. That's so good. That's so good. I'm like (laughs) speechless because we're in it for the long game and the promise. And we need spiritual eyes to see and we need to be listening to, we need to be open. We need to have our eyes and our ears open to what God is doing and saying and speaking to us. And when we are focused on short-term satisfaction, we will always choose what's comfortable in the moment and not surrender to the promise that God has in our life. And it might take years, yeah, but it will be so worth it. So worth it. If we just have the courage to walk in faith with the Lord. And maybe when we don't even understand like why he's leading us to it, it's not even maybe when we don't understand For why sure. he's leading yeah. us to do something, we have to trust that he is going to provide. The Bible talks about how how Abraham attained the promise. It wasn't just faith, which we talk a lot about mm-hmm. faith. And patience. Hmm. And it's like It takes a lot to have faith and patience, Patience. but it's, I trust that you're still going to deliver. Yes. Amen. On the promise. I trust. I trust you. Yes. It don't make sense now. I'm going to even like, and I think we got to actually go with our emotions as far as not saying I'm led by my emotions, but there's times where, I mean, in my heart saying, I'm like, I desiring a wife like yeah. and I wake up crying mm-hmm. but the yeah. fact of it is it's like I have to cry and trust. have patience amen I, I, I have to trust right yeah. because like I've shed too many tears yeah. and I've waited too long for lentil soup amen that's so good <laughs> I'm, like that's so good that's I waited so good. too long like no. Yes. I'm we're not, not taking lentil soup. We're not taking lentil soup. We're not. No, we're done. And you're so right because me too. Like you guys, it might seem like, yeah, we we just trust. We have faith. No, it's like we are, I don't, like you just said, there are nights, countless nights where I'm crying out to God, sobbing, mad. Like, why, Lord? Yeah. But then at the end of the day, it's like, Lord, I trust you. I, I am never going back at this moment, at this time in yeah. my life. Like, we've gone too far. Too far. And I will never turn my back on you. So I trust as, as your daughter that you will provide in due season like you did for all the heroes of faith in the Bible. Like, we are no different. And in the moment, they seemed crazy. 100%. But God provided. Abraham seemed crazy in the moment. Like, oh, you're going to be the father of nations, but you don't even have a child. Your wife is barren. And even in his 60s, in his 70s, and then I think it was like her, she was in her 90s. Sarah was in her 90s when she finally conceived. Yeah. And so they looked crazy. Yeah. So to the natural eye, it seems um, crazy to, to other people that we would trust, but the Lord will provide and it will be better than anything you could ever do on your own or anything you could ever imagine. Absolutely. And it makes you testify. Like, think about this. If you waited for that long and the Lord never delivered, you can't talk about his goodness. So you wouldn't even draw people to him because you can't even tell him how good you can't tell people how good he is. Mm. So it's like even like giving up on the promise puts you in a position you won't even testify how good he is. Mm. Because you had to compromise. Yeah. However, if you do wait, we're still talking about Abraham and Sarah now. It's a 
it's been generations upon generations because they waited. This is the crazy thing. I truly believe the reason why they they literally didn't give in. Well, obviously, you know, <laughs> Sarah tells Abraham to you sleep know sleep with her, yeah. Hagar. Yeah, so yeah, they definitely dropped the ball. <laughs> yeah, they know? definitely tried to do things in their own strength. But yeah, they definitely did. Yeah, sleep with my servant. <laughs> yeah, but I think, and he was like. Like a lot of men. Okay, sure. Okay, of you. course. <laughs> All right, for sure. <laughs> but I literally think what made And that caused wait, a whole mess too for people mess. that don't know the story. Yeah. A super whole Go mess. Go and read it. Go and read it. I think what made them, right, literally wait was they wanted their heavenly father to get glory. Mm. What would make me and you wait? It's because we know at the end of our waiting, we're going to testify and it gets him glory. So I'm, mm. so it's literally, dad, I'm waiting on the promise because I want you to get glory. Amen. And as you just said that too, because I want you to get glory. I'm also thinking, and he's not like the fact that God still blessed Abraham and Sarah, even after that, Sarah literally gave Abraham her her slave to sleep with so that they could have a child to be the promised child because they were had a moment of weakness and said, Oh my gosh, we don't have a child yet. Take you know, this is how we gotta do it ourselves. So even though they you know made the mistake of falling into fear yeah. and trying to work things out on their own, the Lord still provided. Like he know he's not expecting us to be perfect all the time. Um, and he will still, when we constantly surrender to him and look to him for, um, like when we repent to him and turn yeah. back to him and yeah. align with him, like he's never going to turn our, his back on us. Yeah. When you said that, at like, as you were saying that, all I'm thinking is you cannot manufacture the promises of God. Mm. Like they couldn't manufacture the promise. They couldn't do it themselves. They could not. Right. Like the promise of God is only deliverable through on him. him, through him. Amen. And so I think it's like. We try. We try. <laughs> and I think that should help people like, let me stop trying to yes. manufacture the promise because the promise can only come by through him. him, through him. Literally, it can only come, come through, through him. him. So why do we keep trying? Us humans are so funny. <laughs> why am I literally saying, uh, here go a bowl of lentil soup, and I'm literally going to put a label yeah. and it says birthright. Right. No, that's not the promise. Like, yeah. you, you can't slap a label on that thing. Yeah. So we don't have to be stressing out, trying to find all these people, trying no. to go everywhere, trying to, you know, we should be led by the Holy Spirit. And even like we were talking about like dating apps and other things, it's it's always like, what is God, where is God sending me? Like, True. is he leading me to be on a dating app? Is he leading me to go to this event to meet people? Like where, what is he saying for me to do? Yeah. Um, and just being obedient. It, it's trust and obedience yeah. is, is what it is. And wow, this is. This is so good. This. Yeah, yes, this is like, I love this. And yeah. I wish we could just, we could literally talk all day. And we're already at like, <laughs> we're already at over 50 minutes, oh 60 goodness. minutes. Yes. I know. So, okay, yeah. Yes, this has been so awesome. Like, there's so many gold nuggets yeah. in this episode. Yeah. And um, I guess, like, what do you want to end with? Is there anything that's on your heart that God's like speaking to you that you want to make sure yeah. that people know or? Yeah. Two things, all right, and it'll be quick, right? Because I want to be time conscious. Oh, don't worry. Just all right, so say what's on your heart. We kind of like talked a little bit, but I would say in in a way where we were talking about um something I would say that I think women should know when it comes yes, to guys. Yes, right? let's talk about it. Okay. Um guys like to know that you're also interested in them. So what I'm mm. saying is I'm not trying to say Women need to pursue guys. What I'm saying is, all right, let's say a guy pursues you, right? And he's talking to you. Literally, like, yes, we're men. We're masculine. We want to pursue. But we also want to know that you like us. 
You need we confirmation. Also, we also want to know that you're interested in us, right? Because you yeah. got to think about it. The way that it's painted is that guys are to just pursue and pursue mm -hmm. and pursue. And, and it's kind of like what it makes women um, be able to do is just not really have to communicate their interests. Why the guy has to lean fully in and, and communicate his interests. And what I just truly believe that if you're also interested in a guy. Now, if you're not interested in the guy, you can't communicate something that you don't feel. Right. But I do think that like if you are talking to a guy, I do think that it's just healthy. Because at the end of the day, whoever that you're going to date and hopefully lead to marriage, it's going to be your best friend that you you're going to naturally not going to want them to feel that they're giving more and mm -hmm. you're giving less. Yeah. And so I think that just if women will also have the perspective, I'm not pursuing a man. I'm showing him that I'm actually interested in him. I actually do want to know him more. Hmm. And I think it makes the guy, it, it changes the guy perspective and it really makes a guy look at women very differently because obviously they're going to pursue you. We're going, we're looking to get to know you, but I'm telling you the golden nugget is when a woman begin to show interest in a man, naturally he's like, oh, she's different. She hmm. really wants to know me, hmm. who I am. What are some areas that she can help me in versus... Yeah. I have to, I'm trying to take her out. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying I'm trying to figure everything out about her and however that she may share her interests, I got to be okay with that because it's part of being a man. I don't think that that's like the most fruitful way. Mm, that's good. Do you hear that ladies? They want to know. They want to know we're interested. But it's been this this thing that's been created in man's mind that women don't want to be approached, which we know that they yeah. want to be approached, but however, it's made to seem that if I approach you, I'm bothering you. And mm -hmm. so like, it'll have to take a certain type of guy to don't care if they're going to bother you. Yeah. And so I think just simply, um, that's if, true. If a woman I've noticed said, that. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's rare for a guy to like approach me in a public setting. Yeah, and it's because I don't know who created this dynamic, but what's in our head is if you approach a girl out in a public setting and it's not in a, a familiar place where you constantly already see them and you right, know them, right. it's this dynamic that's what's been told to us, I really wish I knew where it came from, that um, is bothering and that they don't want you to approach them. Hmm. And so I think like for guys, they literally just have to be at the point like, I really don't care. Yeah, like, just go for it. I'm just and just say, go. hey, how are you? Yeah, I think that's the perfect place to start. Like, hi, how long have you been going to church here? Or like, you know, where are you from? Or just simple conversation. Yeah. And I think we get so nervous that a lot of times or we're like, what do I talk about or whatever? But it's really just, hi, how are you? That's where you start. True, just conversation. <laughs> My name is. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's, that's what good. I would say. But for women... Vice versa. I don't think you saying, hey, how you doing? My name is Sam. What's yours? I don't think that's pursuing. I think pursuing is after that and like if numbers was exchanged, you're doing everything to get to know this person mm. and they're not putting in any right. effort. Right. But I think you literally um, putting yourself in a position of just saying who you are, it really just make you known. Yeah. Right, because they might have not seen you, but doesn't mean that they don't want you or they're not interested. They just might have never seen you. But I yeah. think just the simple, hey, how you doing? My name is Sam. You know, what's right. yours? For guys, it's like, oh, cool. This is a cool person I can at least have a conversation with. And if it leads to more, praise God. But yeah. But I think just the simple, hey, how you doing? So I would say for women, if they did that, that would be amazing. But I don't think that they need to go any further right. after that. Yeah. We do need to make sure they know when we're interested. And then you said you had another. Yeah. So the last thing, one of my mentors, the greatest thing she told me was this. She said, Marquise, the moment that you touch a person that you like, before mm -hmm. you get to know them as a friend, she said, you're going to be dominated to know them intimately by touch now. Mm -hmm. She said, if you never introduce touch, 
when you're getting to know a person, you're going to be dominated by intimately knowing them. Hmm. And so it, it changed my perspective for me to make sure I'm mindful that touch isn't being incorporated because if I, it's just naturally guys love women. You yeah. know, and, and women love, love men. men, you know, and so when <laughs> especially you begin- if your physical touch, love language, it is very challenging to not touch 100 and it's just coded in. Us, yes. Right. To desire. Again, we all want connection. We're all human and we're all na- our natural desires. It's like, just our it's natural just desires. how we're made. It's how yeah. we're made. And when she said that, that's good. It yeah. just helped me understand like, OK, if I really want to know her and mm. fall in love with her and become her best friend, I need to make sure that I'm not implementing intimate touch. That's like for marriage, right? Mm. That's now when we we move from I truly know you as my friend. I know everything about you because that's all my uh, this whole time has been. And now we're stepping into this place of marriage. And now I'm about to discover you intimately as far as the touch. And, and so it's a different journey. It's yeah. a, The first journey is I'm literally intimately, intimately learning you, knowing you to a point that, yes, you're my best friend. And then when we get married, now it's discovery of your body and who mm-hmm. you are and all of these things. And so I think that would definitely just help you not blur the lines and, you know, end up talking to a person that you just like, dang, we just wasn't aligned. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And, and I think it all comes down to even communication up front. Like it's important to communicate that to the other person. Um, because so they, they know like why maybe we're not holding hands right away or, you know, like cuddling, you know, it's good to just always be, be communicating what our boundaries are and what we need from the other and like why we're doing certain things to protect each other. And, um, but yeah, thank you so much for sharing. This has been, this has been awesome. Is there anything else before? No, no. I mean, just, uh, thank you, Samantha, for having me, you know, a part of the single status. Thank, you know, the viewers for, um, you know, just being a part of this whole family, you know. So Mm -hmm. I just truly just want to say thank you for this opportunity. I hope that, you know, uh, what we said will bless people. I believe that it will. So I'm just I'm just thankful. Yes, I enjoyed our conversation so much and. It was so such a blessing. I'm excited to listen to this one back because there was so many just golden nuggets in this episode. Yes, the lentil yes. soup that's so good. Yes. We don't we do not want lentil soup, okay, guys. I don't <laughs> no even more have lentil, lentil soup. soup at home anymore. I like threw all my lentil soup. So I know I like just taking it far. Like no, I don't want any lentil soup in the pantry. Or <laughs> we're anything. done. No, we're we're yeah. boycotting it. But it's been such a blessing, and I really felt God's presence with this episode. So yeah. thank you so much for taking the time out and. Guys, we will see you next time. Thanks for um, listening to the whole episode and um, we will see you soon. Bye. Oh my gosh, guys. I I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did because this conversation was so life-giving. I was so pumped up after I had this conversation with Marquise. It was just so inspiring. And um, I, I, I'm just thankful that you made it to the end of the episode. And I want to make sure uh, I, I, I let you know that I left his links below if you'd like to follow him on on social media he's he puts out a lot of really good content so definitely give him a follow and also below i added a link to uh uh, the kingdom living conference that is coming up that is hosted by unbreakable ministries a ministry that i'm a part of i will be speaking at this event it is in sterling heights michigan so if you are in the area come out this is an event for millennials and gen z and i would just love to meet you in person and and it's a great way to meet other people meet other believers so definitely check out the link below register now i would love to see you there and don't forget if you if you uh don't follow me already on tiktok and instagram make sure to follow because that's where you get updates on single status podcast on everything that's going on and um if you could rate review subscribe do all the things i would so much appreciate you guys and i just hope you have a wonderful day talk to you soon love you guys